Hello, everyone. Welcome to week two of architecture and game design. This week, we'll be talking about the formal and functional elements of game design and art and architecture. From the syllabus, um, the readings that will be due today are the architectural uh, approach to level design chapter two, um, which is drawing for level designers and uh, pattern language for game design chapter one which talks about the history and reasoning behind creating patterns in games. Um, also, you will, be, or will have been responsible for reading one pattern from a pattern language. Lecture topics this week are going to be the formal elements uh, in art, architecture, and game design. Um, those include things like aesthetic affordances, such as luminosity, color, symbols, and landmarks, um, and also the functional elements of uh, art, architecture, and game design. Class activities today, uh, we're going to discuss this lecture and the readings that you'll have done. Uh, we're going to look at a second way to distill patterns within your group. And then we're going to do the formal and functional pattern exercises, creating two new patterns, uh, one as a group and one individually. And then you'll begin your first group uh, game or scene design exercise uh, using those patterns. The project this week that you'll be working on that based on those exercises is to create a single scene in the Unity Editor. Um, you're going to demonstrate the formal and functional elements that we'll have talked about in that scene using the patterns that you derive in the exercises. Uh, the scene doesn't need to be playable, just geometry, although it is good to make it playable if that's possible. Uh, we'll talk about why in class a little bit. And you are going to need to describe the scene and the elements that you've incorporated into it in your readings and assignments documents individually. Um, I would like you for this exercise, uh, we'll talk about this in class, to use primitive shapes as opposed to importing assets from the asset store. Um, in later um, exercises and projects, you'll be allowed to use uh, imported assets as long as you're clear of when you're using them. But for this, I want you creating simple geometry on your own. Okay, so formal and functional elements. Those are the most basic building blocks of a design field. Um, what are they? Uh, by formal, I mean having to do with form, not proper or dress nicely. Um, things that are about the form of the thing being designed. And by functional elements, we mean things having to do with function. Um, you find more functional elements, the more functional the field you're designing for is fewer functional elements in art, more in uh, architecture and in game design, um, you know, the field is lousy with them. So formal elements in art, uh, what are they? They are pretty well defined. Uh, people have thought a lot about this, uh, art scholars and artists. So thing, those things are line, shape, form, tone, texture, pattern, color, and composition. Um, and uh, also things, uh, another, another set of those might be point, line, shape, form, space, color, and texture. Um, so it's a, it's a pretty, pretty well-defined uh, set of elements and pretty easy to understand, understand what those are. We know what a shape is, we know what a line is. Um, we can look at a piece of art and say, ah, it's made up of a bunch of lines and also a bunch of shapes and they have different colors and different textures and are put together into different patterns to create different compositions. Cool, uh, pretty straightforward. Um, there are also design principles uh, which are used to decide how to apply those formal elements. Those are things like balance, proportion, perspective, emphasis, movement pattern, repetition, rhythm, variety, harmony, harmony and unity. Um, some of those things start to sound like patterns. Some of those things start to be functional and could be considered functional elements of art. So formal elements of architecture. Um, again, pretty well defined. Uh, people, architects and, and architectural scholars and historians have thought a lot about that. Uh, they think that those are line, shape, color, and texture, that pretty much buildings are made up of those things. Um, they, again, don't exist in isolation in a building, right? A building is a, not just made up of lines, it's a combination of lines forming shapes uh, that have color and have texture that are organized in different ways um, to make formal compositions. So um, they're used to do things like create pattern, create rhythm, uh, to create symmetry, balance, contrast, proportion, theme, unity. Similar to art, um, but focused on, on architectural structure. Um, 
So as you're doing level design, to uh, a significant degree, your levels are going to be made up of formal elements, of the formal elements of architecture. But just as architecture uses formal and functional elements differently than games, or than art does, games use them differently and it will be useful for us to define them in terms of our medium. So what are functional elements in architecture? Um, so as any of you who have studied, um, studied architecture independently, and I recommend that you do that if you have the opportunity, uh, especially if you're going to be doing any kind of level design, um, may know there is a whole school of architecture called functionalist or functionalism uh, and functionalist architecture. So um, that is somewhat what we're talking about here. Um, the idea in functionalism was to look back to um, ancient Greek thought on uh, something called the Vitruvian Triad, where they said that design is, consists of three elements. Utilitas, which is commodity or convenience or utility. Um, Venustas, which is beauty. And firmitas, which is firmness. And pardon my Greek pronunciation, um, I, I don't really speak Greek. So, um, And functionalism was looking a lot at utilitas, uh, saying what is the functional need of a piece of architecture? Um, and functionalists thought that, that that was the most important thing, was what is the function of this building? What is it for? Um, and by that, they largely meant, you know, what is the door for? What's going to happen here and how, how can we facilitate it? What parts of the building are necessary? When they looked at a church, they were saying, what's the structure necessary of a church? All right, we need... A, you know, an altar, we need a pulpit to speak from, we need pews to sit in, uh, depending on the, the you know, denomination or, or religion the church was for, perhaps other, uh, other elements. But uh, they were less concerned with the purpose of this church is to create awe, and so we should design it in that way, and they were more concerned with what is the, the functional necessity of this space. Um, so needless to say, they created uh, very useful and boring buildings by and large. Um, they didn't think that you should spend effort on, um, on the aesthetics of the building, that those were not, that those were not key. Um, they did think that any aesthetic enhancements you provided should enhance the rest of the building. That part I can get behind, um, but uh, I think that they were too focused on function over form, um, and, and I think that there needs to be a balance. So moving on to formal and functional elements in games. Uh, so what are the formal elements of games? Um, I think that they're the nouns. Uh, game designer Ian Schreiber, uh, who wrote uh, exercises for game designers with Brenda Brathwaite, uh, also a, a brilliant designer focusing uh, largely on game mechanics, but he describes uh, formal elements as being the player's objectives, rules, resources, game state, information, sequencing, player interaction, and, and theme of a game. Um, I think that's a reasonable start. Uh, I think there's a lot more nouns in a game, but um, there are those kind of things, the actual parts of the game. Uh, in that case, what are the functional elements? They're the verbs. So the game mechanics. And games have a lot of different mechanics. Games don't just have a single one. But they're verbs, so they're pretty easy to find. They're the run, jump, shoot, hide, um, sneak, sprint, um, all, of those, all of those kind of things that you use to describe your core gameplay loop um, in terms of its function, those are functional elements. So that's, that's pretty straightforward. Formal elements, functional elements. Games are made up of both of them. Games compose them into complicated structures. Um, you know, scenes, encounters, gameplay loops, um, you know, themes, the aesthetics of a game are all built out of those um, molecules. All right, so that is pretty much it for the lecture. Uh, walk through the rest of the slides. In class, I'm going to ask you questions about this lecture and about the readings and give you a chance to ask me questions about them so that we can cover things in a little bit more detail. Um, you know, again, uh, architectural Approach to Level Design Chapter 2 and Pattern Language for Game Design. Um, tell me if something confused you, and I'm going to ask you to talk about patterns that you picked from uh, a pattern language.
And then the exercises we'll be doing in class as a group, you'll be creating a formal pattern. Um, here's the slide for that. You'll see it in class. And uh, you'll be doing an exercise individually to create functional elements, uh, functional patterns <clears throat> from elements that you choose. Then um, your assignments will be uh, your reading, which is uh, pattern language. We're going to pick one pattern again, write a paragraph in response. That's just recommended. You don't have to do it this week, but I'd like you to. Um, and then your required reading is an architectural approach to level design chapter three, level design workflows. Um, I'll be talking to you about that in week three. Um, the exercises, you need to complete exercise three and four in your readings and assignments documents. Um, now, exercise three is a group exercise, so you'll all have a very similar section in, in each group member's uh, document. And then four will be individual, and that'll be just in your, your individual, uh, only in your document, not in your group member's document. Um, although if you want to include your, your group members as well, as long as you indicate who did what, that's, that's fine with me. Um, and then for your patterns, you're going to enter the patterns that you found in exercises three and four into the pattern library. We should have talked about that in class on week one um, and have answered questions about it in week two, so you should get that. Um, be sure to ask questions if you're still having any trouble. And then for your project, you're gonna be creating a single scene in the editor. You'll be using the formal uh, game elements pattern that your team derived and using at least one of the functional patterns that you derived individually. Um, you don't have to use every group member's uh, formal pattern, just, uh, just one. Um, sorry, functional pattern, uh, just one of them, but you may use more than one. Um, and then um, the scene doesn't have to be playable. Uh, it just needs to be the architectural design. Um, in your readings and assignments document, you're going to describe what happens in that level in the case that you aren't able to implement those mechanics. And I don't expect you to be implementing complex mechanics to, for the functional elements, but I do expect you to explain how your formal elements are arranged in order to facilitate the pattern that you, um, that you talk about. Um, and then, uh, yeah, you're going to describe the scene and elements that you incorporate in your readings and assignments document. Uh, again, this is group work, so a large portion of the project part of your readings and assignments document for each week can be shared amongst group members, but I do expect you to also include your individual thoughts on uh, the project you worked on. All right, so thank you so much, and uh, I go back over to here. Um, I look forward to seeing you in class.